Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and in this video we're going to talk about caching in Spring Boot. Before we dive in, let's quickly talk about what caching is and what it's good for. So the idea is usually when you have an expensive operation, so calling a slow API, invoking expensive database queries or, or really just talking to a system that you have to pay for because you're charged on a per API call basis, like these kind of things. Um, then it might make sense to, to cache a copy of the data somewhere locally where you can access it much, much faster and without the, the cost associated. And while this is nice and sounds straightforward, it's not as easy actually, because you really have to know the requirements for the underlying data. Like, do you always have to have the, the most recent version of the data available? That's important. And you have to think about when, once you have the cache, like when do you remove entries from the cache? and how can you make sure that you reconcile with the underlying um, actual data. So Spring provides us with a cache abstraction that we can use. And there are multiple implementations, like we could use Redis, we could use eCache or Hazelcast, but in this video, we, we just stick with the onboard caching system, which really is just a concurrent hash map. Um, but it's enough to just see how the cache works and how we can just validate its functionality. So with that out of the way, let's code. So let's quickly take a look at the dependencies as we usually do. So I'm using Spring Boot 272 and the relevant dependency that we have to use here is the Spring Boot Starter Cache. So that's pretty much all there is to it, but we have to make sure that we have this here. So before we forget about it, let's make sure that we enable caching because that's one of the preconditions to make sure that this works. So what I'm gonna do now is come up with a service that has all the underlying requirements. So we have some data that we can add, we can remove it, and we wanna see how the, how the cache actually works. So before we turn to the cache, let's start with that service. And just bidding on one of the previous videos, let's call that um, a newsletter service. So newsletter service, got the service stereotype. So what we wanna do here is we want to support a couple of um, functions. First one is subscribe. So we want to make sure that people can subscribe. And let's just also create a data class for an actual sub subscriber. So subscriber has an email and has also a name. We just keep it simple. There's no first and last name, it's just the name. So we want to make sure that we have a subscriber that can just subscribe. Um, and I also wanna make sure that there's some unsubscribe um, function. So let's turn to that. So there's unsubscribe, we pass it the same subscriber and we can unsubscribe. And I also want to have a, a lookup functionality, which is what we're gonna cache. And uh, we just call it lookup. And what we wanna do is we pass in an email address and we want to return a subscriber. So these are the three functions that we are going to support uh, in this video. So let's quickly add the implementations and then enable caching for them. So our data store is also just a concurrent hash map. So where well, we just map the email address, which is the string to the actual subscriber. So with the storage in place, let's start the implementation of the lookup functionality. So what we're going to do here is really just return storage at the email address. So that should give us the subscriber. And that may be null because we might not have a subscriber with that email address. So we just throw an illegal state exception. In that case, uh, subscriber email not subscribed. Simple as that, right? So we, we try to look it up and if it doesn't exist, we just throw the exception. And for the fun of it, let's also delay that service. We just pretend that the lookup functionality takes a lot of time. So we're using time unit seconds, sleep five. So we're sleeping for five seconds, just pretending that this takes a lot of time. And then we look up the, um, the subscriber and return it or throw the exception. So how do we actually subscribe? So for the subscription, we just add to the storage, subscriber email equals subscriber. So that's all, right? This is the subscription. And likewise, if we just want to unsubscribe someone, we just go to storage, uh, remove subscriber email. And that's about it. All right, 
Since that service is now in place, um, let's just write a quick test to just make sure that it works as expected. So let's go to the test directory. And this is our default test, which is um, caching works. Doesn't really matter here. So we need the service here to test this. So I'm using on the wired and this has to be late in it or service. That's the newsletter service. So, and then um, let's actually create a subscriber. Subscriber, uh, that will be me. So this is my email address, say hi if you want. Um, that's also me. Um, and we're using assertions. Um, no, hang on, we first subscribe. So we're using the, the service and subscribe the subscriber. All right, so once that's added, let's make sure that it's actually subscribed. Uh, as it equals, we expect the subscriber when we just invoke service lookup subscriber email. So we're using the newsletter service, we look up the email address and we want to just make sure that we find the current subscriber, right? So this, this should already work, so let's quickly test that. Just pulling this up here. And as you would expect, it takes a lot of time because um, the lookup operation is rather expensive, right? So we, we subscribe the user, the lookup takes five seconds because we pretend that it's, that it's super um, expensive and the test succeeds, right? And then likewise, we can just make sure that we, um, that we unsubscribe the user, unsubscribe subscriber. And now we wanna make sure that whenever we look up that there is an illegal state exception that is thrown. So um, that needs to be Java. Uh, whenever we call lookup, not service lookup, so it's lookup subscriber email. So let's also run this and then we finally get to adding the cache. So if I run this right now, uh, it's also going to take a couple of seconds because we have to still do the, the whole look up once the user is subscribed. But eventually um, that succeeds, we unsubscribe the user and then we expect the exception to be thrown and that all works as expected, right? So uh, we still have 10 seconds now accumulating because that look up itself also takes five seconds. So with that out of the way, let's go back to the newsletter service and actually start caching something. So the first thing that, that we want to change is the lookup functionality. So we're adding the cacheable annotation and it looks like this. And now we can also specify a name for the cache because we might maintain different caches per collection, resource, whatever we have there to organize the data. So I can just pass in um, a value and call this subscribers because this is, this is how we refer to this cache. So right now, this is already being cached. And before we test this, um, let's also add a few things that we need to take care of. Because right now, the thing is, if the, if the underlying storage changes, this is not reflected here until we tell Spring, hey, there is, a, there is an update to the cache. Please put this new element into the cache. So we're using cache put here. And then we also have to use the same, the same cache name. So it's subscribers. And we have to provide the key because here I'm passing in a subscriber object. So we have to tell Spring what the key should be. So I'm using a Spring expression language. We can just refer to the, to the parameter of the function and use subscriber email. So this will make sure that we add something to the cache. And likewise, there's unsubscribe. So what we're gonna do here is this is cache eviction. So we wanna make sure that whenever a user um, is re uh, removed from the storage, it is also at the same time removed from the cache. So this is what we're doing here. So we again have to pass the name of the cache and again have to declare the key that we're using here. So I'm using subscriber email. All right, so how do we actually test this right now? So let's go back to the test. And this is this one. And now we wanna make sure that the cache actually holds the values that we expect. So how do we access the cache? So that's pretty straightforward as well. So we can just inject private late in it var uh, the cache manager. So, and with that, we can access our actual cache. So let's go there. So our actual cache is manager get cache. And now we have to provide the name that we've been using. So it's subscribers because there may be multiple caches that we, that we have in the application, right? And right now let's make sure that the cache is empty. So I'm asserting null that cache 
uh, cash cat um, subscriber email. So we want to make sure, um, yeah, that may be null, but we know that this is not null in that case. So I'm just overriding this. So um, we want to make sure that the cache is empty initially. And then we have the subscribe operation and we want to make sure that now the cache holds one of the values. So assert not null um, cache get subscriber email. So what we've done here is we're making sure the cache is empty. Then we subscribe a new subscriber. We've already tested that the service already has it, but we also want to make sure that the cache has the subscriber. So, and finally, we also test the unsubscribe flow. So we unsubscribe the user and we're making sure that the cache again is empty. So let's briefly run this and see what happens. So as before, we can see that it's not green. So let's, let's see what has happened here. Um, so we had expected a subscriber, but it's null. So let's see where this is. Um, we can just go to the respective test. Okay, so let's see what happens here. We had subscribed the subscriber, um, and now uh, it somehow it happened that we get null when we just invoke um, the cache. And the thing that has happened here is um, the cache actually doesn't have the value that we would expect, and here's why. And this is one of the pitfalls when when pitfalls when using um, using caching. So let me go there. So we can see um, that here is the subscribe operation and I'm adding a new subscriber to the storage and I'm also using cache put. But the thing that I've been missing is that I have to return the actual value, otherwise Spring will not pick it up and add it to the cache. So here I have to return the actual subscriber. So just make sure that we now return um, storage, let's go there, subscriber email. And that should be not null, so I can just enforce this, right? So when we have cache put and it's on a function, we have to make sure that we return the actual value so it's added to the cache because we first might have to compute the value and we can set it here, but we still have to return the value that should be added to the cache. Otherwise, it's not gonna happen. So let's go back to the test and run this all again. So I'm going here, run this test and now we still have to wait for the initial five seconds because we cannot remove that. Um, so it takes some time to, to run the initial computation. But the next look up is much faster, right? So we can see all the assertions are complete at this point. That has all worked. Uh, the cache works as expected. And we still have the second look up at the end of this test. Um, but we can see the test time is only five seconds. Um, so that already means that the look up um, hasn't incurred any additional cost at this point. So this is a quick way of adding a cache and making sure that it works. Um, again, there are multiple implementations that we can use and that expose their specifics like expiration times and whatnot. But for simple use cases, the, the onboard cache just, just works uh, nicely. So we can go with that. So that wraps it up for this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.